Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to talk today about helmets. Now, helmets are something that are really dear to my heart. I work as a pre-hospital care doctor and I see so much bad stuff going on on the roads and helmets are the only thing that protect our brain. You know, what's in here? And we've only got one of those and if we damage that, it's going to be game over pretty much. So how can we get the best helmet, but also the helmet that works best for what we want to do on a motorbike? So today I'm going to have a look at the Klim Krios Pro Helmet and I got one of these uh, last summer so I've used it all through the hot weather and all through the winter as well and got some pretty good observations on it. So what we'll do, we'll go into what the helmet is made of, how it's constructed but also all the detail on it and how it actually works. So let's go and have a look at the Klim Krios Pro. The vast majority of head injuries that happen on motorcycles are a result of blunt trauma, so hitting something when you're wearing the helmet. Penetrating injuries are far less frequent and we need to get very unlucky to get that penetrating injury where something goes through the helmet, though sometimes you can get complete helmet destruction. So the helmet is designed to try and protect our head and absorb the energy forces that happen when our head hits something. And if you imagine we come off our bikes and our head hits the road, either side on or back on or even at the front, and you get a sudden deceleration of the helmet, so the helmet just stops. And then the soft tissue in our brain and inside our skull keeps on moving and it bounces against the inside of the skull and then bounces back again. So it's a real sort of hip movement, head stops, and then the brain keeps moving inside. And the risk with that is that it can tear blood vessels and that's what causes bleeds within the brain, which can cause really significant injury and disability. The other form of head injury we can get from this type of thing as well is where you get a diffuse injury. You get damage all over just from the trauma of that hit. Now, we don't want either of those, so we want a helmet to protect our head and absorb those forces in a predictable way and a safe way that gives us the best chance of coming out of any accidents that may happen in the best possible way. And so helmets are designed to do that. They've got the hard exterior shell and that actually prevents penetrating. It stops sharp objects going in. And then we've got a layer underneath that that's designed to absorb energy. Now, I'm going to talk about the Klim helmet today because it's a little bit different and it's got a different sort of type of structure within it that absorbs that energy. So let's have a look at the helmet and I've got one here on my desk. This is the one I've been wearing sort of since I got it. It's, uh, I like the colour on it. I got it because it's a bit KTM-y, it's got a bit of orange. Um, but the first thing you notice is how light it is. You know, this is super light. I've got my um, showy Neotech here. Uh, which I wore before and the difference in weight is really quite dramatic. You know, this is a beautiful helmet uh, But the weight difference is really quite phenomenal So when we look at the helmet, we've got quite a few features to this We've got the peak on it, which is actually pretty good for the Sun uh, The main issue with this if you find if you put the transitions visor on is that if you put the transitions visor up uh, you get sort of dark patches where the light comes through here and that's not ideal because when you put it back down again it's actually pretty disorientating so they do advise not to use that transitions uh, visor with the peak on you can put it into four different formats you can have it for road riding adventure riding off-road riding whatever you like really and we do that by taking bits and pieces off so we can take the peak off we can change the visor we can take the visor off we can wear goggles with it it has all sorts of permutations so it's a really really flexible helmet what I do love about this helmet is the ventilation. There's a huge ventilation patch at the front here and you get so much air coming in th through here. There is a bit of a chin guard underneath which I've taken out and again if you take that out you get a lot more ventilation coming up under the helmet especially when you're standing up. And then we've got the vents on top as well uh, with those exhaust vents at the back. So you know first impressions really light helmet really nicely made beautiful hand laid carbon on it as well and then if you look inside it as well it's really plush it's really really comfortable and soft i changed the cheek pads you can get three different sizes of cheek pads just to get a better fit and the thing with klim helmets is that they don't have as many shell sizes as other manufacturers and so the padding is what tends to increase and so this is actually a relatively big shell on my head i've got a relatively big head um so so it is quite a big shell and it does look relatively big on me but you know i'll take that for its lightness and its ventilation i'll take that every day because it really is a nice helmet 
One of the features I really like is the pin lock in it. So we've got a pin lock and it's an amazing field of vision. And the pin lock is probably one of the best I've ever used. I've used it through the wet winter, through freezing days, any sort of conditions you can think of, and it's never missed it up. When you're riding along, you can actually see the mist on the bit that hasn't got the pin lock, but that mist never comes onto the pin lock area. So I've been massively impressed with that and that really clear field of vision that we get. The other feature on this helmet as well is the pin lock connector, which is magnetic. And that's pretty cool. You know, it's so easy to use with gloves. Uh, it's very easy to undo and do up. It takes a little bit of getting used to and, you know, to be convinced that it's actually, um, you know, working and that it's secure. But they've been doing it on ski helmets for a while. And I think this is a really good progression for this type of helmet. It just makes things easy and it's lovely. And then the lining itself, you can take out. So I've taken this out a few times and washed it. You know, if you're getting a bit sweaty when you're off road, uh, it's really nice to take the lining out and give it a wash. So just give it a cold wash in some really gentle detergent and then just dry it uh, in the room air and it, it just comes out a treat, really nice. So lovely helmet, really impressed. And we'll go into a little bit more detail and show you some of the individual features and how it works. So let's take a look at the peak and how we take this off. So we've got some clips on the side here. They're quite fiddly actually. Um, they take a little bit of effort, um, but you can do it. They just rotate. This one rotates clockwise, but it does take a little bit of effort to get it going and it feels like it's not gonna go. Um, and you just need to pull it up a little bit just to get that pin out like that. Uh, put that somewhere safe. And that sort of frees up everything here. And then on the other side, do the same. This one goes anti-clockwise. You just free it up. And if you look, there are little sort of T connectors on the end like that. Um, so a little T and that just rotates inside to lock it in place. And once you've done that, the beak will be retained by the screw on top, but the visor will come off. Um, so you can change that and put the transitions visor on. You can take the pin lock out if you need to. And then to take the actual peak off itself, you just unscrew this. There's a little plastic washer, just be careful not to lose that. You can see I've not washed under there for a while. And then if you're going to use it for road riding, you probably want to put this back in to just protect it and keep it in a safe place. It's a bit of a plastic thread on it, so it's plastic going into metal, which can be a little bit fiddly, so um, just bear with it but it does go back in and it will screw in all the way. You can get a closer look here at the vent on the front as well. So that's the top vent that I was talking about earlier, um, just to change that airflow. And then you've got the big exhaust vents at the back here, and it works really well. That ventilation is amazing. I've put a few extra reflective strips on the back here, just for a bit more safety. So that's how you take the visor off and the peak off. So for the beady-eyed amongst you, you'll see that I've given them a clean. It was a bit embarrassing to uh, take the, uh, everything off and see all the muck in there. So I've given it a clean up. Um, I use this thing called uh, Rain-X, which uh, it's just really good. I, you know, I'm not a product placer at all, but I do like things that work. And this just gives a bit of a water repellent coating and it doesn't have any sort of nasty solvents in it. So it seems to work really well for cleaning it off, especially on the visor. So to put the peak back on, the first bit to do is get the central bit and you just pop in the screw so you just rotate that screw and it's got two positions and that just stabilizes it and then you can turn it on its side and we're just going to locate that on there like that if you look at the actual clip bits there is a t-bit like that and that's the bit we need to be lining up in the hole if you look at the hole there's a sort of section as well let's pop it in and it's facing forwards so the actual bit here is facing forwards a little bit can be a bit fiddly and then you rotate it towards the back of the helmet like that and it won't go any further once it's got the right position and that holds that side in and then you do the same on the other side a little bit fiddly but you know you get used to it you can find these are a bit stiff sometimes so you know make sure you've got strong fingers to do it with um, you know it, it, it can be a bit challenging and then if you notice that the Little tabs on it are always pointed to the back of the helmet when you've put those on. And then once you've done that, that's when you can put your goggles. That's your sort of, you know, your sort of off-road 
set up with the peak and then you can just pop your goggles on and they sit quite nicely in the aperture if you look at that imagine there's a face in there and they sit quite nicely i think don't they yeah quite happy with that so they're all good and that's your sort of off-road configuration you can put the visor on as well and have that coming down over the goggles if it'll fit or you put your goggles on your chin and put the visor down so you can have sort of adventure bike setups as well for if you do want to use goggles putting the visor on is a little bit fiddlier um, compared to just doing the peak and you've got these sort of holes here which need to line up under here and you can sort of pull this back and if you look I'll just bring it a bit close to the camera there's um, a little lip around here and that's where the visor sits and it's a little bit tricky to get on initially but once you've got one side done it's actually um, not not too bad and if you just fit it within there and you'll feel it sort of clicks on a little bit when it's in the right place if you heard that it just sort of clicks onto that bit so don't worry about the other side for now just get this bit lined up and you've got to do a little bit of holding get your t-pins lined up inside as well there we go so a little bit fiddly yeah but like i say you don't need any tools for it and then you just rotate that all the way back so it's facing backwards and your visors back on and then we do the same for the other side you find the lip here this circular bit here goes onto the lip and it, it'll, it'll click which should click there we go and then line that up and put your t-piece back in so it is a little bit fiddly and i wouldn't want to be doing this over a drain grate or something where i could lose this bit of plastic but um you know it, it does work pretty well sometimes let's just try that again there we go so you can see i've done this quite a few times and it's still a little bit fiddly just takes a little bit of doing uh, but the helmet does you know sort of change configurations quite nicely without any tools what i'm going to do now is take the liner out because i want to show you the choroid lining uh, so the choroid uh, shock absorbent stuff as well so with the cheek pads they come out first and there's quite a bit of velcro going on here and you just undo the velcro on those and then you get the slidey bit so there are plastic tabs that fit underneath if you look these tabs then come out so that's pretty easy and that's quite a nice detail of the buckle which is the magnetic one and you take that off do the same for the other side the velcro at the front and it goes sort of around the back as well sort of around this bit and then the tabs are holding this bit in here so we'll pull that bit out like that that's both the cheap pads out and those are the things that you can change you can actually change those around and then to get the lining itself out for washing it's a little bit more interesting but you've got clips at the back so there are two sort of press stud clips here and then the whole thing should just gently pull out and we come around to the front and it's got more plastic tabs that go into the front of the helmet and these are a little bit fiddly you've got to be a bit careful be a bit gentle because there are some tabs here that could break off if you're not careful so that's that bit taken out and that's the bit you can wash probably a cold wash just with really gentle detergent and that gives you a far better view inside um, just see if i can get some better light for that um, if you look inside it's quite a good view of the um the tubular system that absorbs the energy the choroid um, really quite funky looking stuff and you can see the fact it's got holes in it and that's going to increase ventilation dramatically that's the inside so let's talk about comfort and you know comfort means a huge amount especially on, on the bike for a long day I've worn this for some pretty long days last summer walked through probably 30 degree 34 degree heat and that's even in the UK uh, and then I've worn it through winter as well where it's been down to sort of minus five degrees Celsius 
and it's coped really well through all of that. It does get more ventilation, it does get more wind, but you can shut the ventilation vents and get less wind. You can also put the chin guard back in underneath just to stop as much coming up underneath. And when you're sitting down, there tends to be less air anyway than when you're standing up, when you want that extra air to ventilate your face. It's really light. When you turn your head when you're doing checks, it, it just doesn't feel like you're wearing a helmet compared to previous helmets I've had. And People always get a bit concerned about the peak, you know, does it sort of blast your head back when you're trying to do your shoulder checks? I've not really found that's an issue, you know, even up to sort of 70 miles an hour, not that I go any quicker, uh, but it's not really been an issue for some reason. It's obviously well designed, it's got the streamlining vents within it, and it doesn't tug or pull at all when you do your head checks. The other thing is when you're going straight along as well, sometimes peaks can sort of pull your head back a bit, but it seems really well balanced aerodynamically and works really, really nicely. It feels lovely and comfortable, and I found with previous helmets, you can get a little bit of neck ache and a little bit of stiffness after a long day, but this one, it just, it, it just carries on going. You don't feel like you're wearing a helmet. So I'm massively impressed with the comfort features of it. Uh, the field of vision when you put the visor down is superb. You've got such a wide peripheral vision on this. And you go back to a conventional helmet and it feels like looking through a post box. You know, it, it really does feel quite narrow when you go back to a normal helmet. So I love this sort of field of vision. It just feels safer, but also it makes the ride more enjoyable because you just see more of what's around you and you take everything in. So I was very, very impressed with that bit. So in terms of comfort, I think it's an amazingly comfortable helmet, super light, super good field of vision, super good ventilation. The only slight issue, and I don't really think it's an issue, is when it was really cold, my head got cold. But you'd expect that because of the ventilation in it and how it works. All I did for that was put a Gore-Tex Windstopper balaclava on, and that worked perfectly and made the helmet nice and warm for winter riding. Let's recap the Klim Krios Pro Helmet. Now, I don't quite know how to pronounce it. I think some people pronounce it Klim, some people do Klim. Um, I don't really care, you know, that's how I pronounce it. But I've had this helmet since last summer and I've ridden with it all through the winter and it really has blown me away as a helmet. The thing I love the most are the lightness of it. You put it on and you just don't know you're wearing this helmet and that feels great in a helmet. You know, you just get rid of that weight that's moving around on top of your head. I love the field of vision on it and the pin lock. You can just take so much in and you see so much and it makes things just so much brighter and more enjoyable. The transitions visor is amazing, but remember you just probably just need to take the peak off with that, otherwise you're gonna get the funny dots in it. And then I love the ventilation on this as well. You know, you can really ramp up the ventilation and when you're standing up off-road, the amount of air coming past your face is just beautiful and it's so refreshing. So would I recommend this helmet? Yes, I would. It's a high price range, uh, high price point, but I think it's really, really worth it. And in terms of safety and protecting our heads, I think research your helmets, make sure they have the right approvals and make sure that you invest in your head.